The Green Inferno, is it even worth your time or is it just a Cannibal Holocaust ripoff? Let's talk about it. Yeah. What is going on, peeps? Whew. What an evening. I just came back from watching The Green Inferno. And uh, I've been anticipating this for a while. I know they made it a while and there was some kind of issues that was holding the film back. But <sighs> I got a lot to talk about and I don't want to make this video too long. So as usual, I'm skipping the synopsis. I'm not going to get into all of that. Those are for previews. But just to give you a little breakdown of what the film's about, basically is these activists that are trying to... Uh, save these uh, villagers or whatever and the plane crashes and they're a bunch of cannibals and it's just whew, wild. Now let me start off by saying I am not a huge cannibal uh, movie person. Uh, I love horror films. Everybody who knows me, that's my favorite uh, type of films. But uh, something about cannibals, something about zombies, it just doesn't really appeal to me at all. Um, I, I, I've never really cared for any of them. Uh, Cannibal Holocaust really didn't do anything for me. Uh, so going into this film, I didn't have really any high expectations. I just figured it was going to be really violent, really gross, uh, probably um, not much of a story or whatever. But... Coming out of the film, I actually found it to be a lot better than what I thought it was going to initially be. Now, I know a lot of reviews out there, they're going to, this movie is going to get slammed. This movie was disgusting. It was gross. I don't understand how anybody can like these chop em ups. And then, oh, you know, it's just kill and kill and blood and gore and violence. And what's the point? What's the purpose? Why? Uh, even just from some of the reviews that have already kind of eked out here and there, uh, it, it's 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 getting slammed pretty hard. And I think most of the criticism comes from people who don't get what the film's supposed to be about. You should not walk into this film thinking plot. You should not walk into this film thinking that. It, and, and and let me let me pause for a second. It's one of the most violent films I've ever seen. But if you're one of these gore fest people who you're big and tough and you think, oh, none of that bothers me and you're totally desensitized and don't go into this film thinking that this is going to be it for you and this is, uh, you know, some kind of uh, hardcore uh, torture porn, you know, and it's not living up to your expectations or whatever. I've seen worse than that. It doesn't bother me. What's the big deal? I don't get it. If you're walking into the film kind of with a clean slate, as much as you can be, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be amused, believe it or not. I was not expecting to be amused whatsoever in this film. And, and actually, there were several parts of it where I had to take a, a deep breath and laugh. And part of that, I think, was intentional because... There's uh, one of the early scenes in the film. It's actually already by the middle of the film because a good portion of the film uh, doesn't take place uh, with the cannibals and everything. So, uh, But once it starts getting there after the plane crashes, and I'm not giving you any spoilers or anything, but there's a really, really hefty scene where you're just like, oh my gosh. And, uh, and I'd have to say that that scene kind of ranks in the top, maybe in the top five most violent and horrific things I had ever seen in a film. So it's really heavy. And then afterwards, there was a little bit of comic relief soon after that. And I think it was intentional because I think we needed that. Because if it would have been that intense horror the whole time, I don't think the film would have been as good. Um, hey, hey, Cammy. Anyway. If you're trying to see something that's violent, if you don't mind the violence, if you want to see something that has some shock value and 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 a little bit of comedy, because it really it really does. I wouldn't 
I wouldn't call this a horror comedy, but it has a lot more comedy than you'd expect from this type of film. And if you just want to sit with your girlfriend and shock the shit out of her and put your arm around her in the movies, this is a good movie to see. It's also a good movie to go see with your buddies so you can sit there and laugh and be corny and goof around. Uh, it's that kind of movie. It's it's just a, a, a roller coaster ride the whole way through. Kind of like how I felt with the Evil Dead remake. They're totally different films, but it was that kind of roller coaster feeling where it's like intense and then there's some laughing and a little bit of breathing and then it's intense again and, and it kind of goes back and forth. Some of the acting in the film is a little bit cheesy and a little bit kind of strange. Uh, some of the writing, I think, again, that was intentionally done. I think it was done to kind of give the viewer a little bit of comic relief, a little bit of moment to breathe. I think for a film like this, it is really important for them to kind of give you this break in between some of the violence and, and more horrific scenes. And I like that the first scene of violence was probably the most intense because then later on in the film, you always had that feeling like it was going to happen again or something similar was going to happen again. And, and although there are some really crazy things that happen, um, th th there's just this one scene that just tops everything in the film. So some of the acting, like I said, was a little bit questionable to say the least, uh, but it was fun. It was enjoyable. Uh, I'm going to say the, the standout was the lead actress. I thought she's uh, an attractive person, but not over the top. You know, to where like you're looking at her and you're thinking there's no way somebody like that would be in a position like that. I think uh, she kind of played the role really well. Uh, she's kind of like the uh, reluctant kind of character in the film to, to even be part of this whole thing. There were times where you see all the horror happening and all of this crazy stuff. You can see it in her face. You can see the, the fear and the, and, the, and the intense moments. And I thought that was really really well done. This one scene in particular uh, towards getting close to the end of the film with her, I thought uh, she really had me believing that, you know, she was in that kind of danger and more so than what you saw on the screen, but how she was acting kind of had me, uh, you know, I was kind of like bracing myself. So as I'm doing some of the uh, research on the film, I find out that the main actress, Lorenza, Izo is actually married to the uh, Eli Roth, the director. Uh, a little surprising. I, I didn't know that. Uh, if I would have known that going into the film, I probably would have uh, paid more attention maybe to some of the flaws just to think, oh, you know, that he just cast her because they're married. And I'm sure there was a bit of that. But actually, I, I do think she did a great job. So, um, good choice. Uh, good choice overall on most of the cast. I mean, again, this isn't a serious film that you should go into uh, really feeling like, you know, it's just dark and serious and, and, you know, you have to be like this for the film. Believe it or not, it's, it's more fun than what you would think. Now, again, if you're squeamish, then by by all means, don't don't even bother. Don't don't even watch this film because it is quite disturbing. And some people who are squeamish to violence, they're not going to get it at all. So, uh, you know, this isn't a film for you guys. If, if you're that kind of person where you're you're offended by violence, you know, I like violence in films, but for me, it has there has to be a reason for the violence. And, and this film, although uh, it doesn't 100% totally justify what you see on the screen, they could have suggested things more as opposed to showing things more. And there were some scenes where they suggested, uh, but overall... You, you kind of need that for the shock value for this film. And I thought the film gave it to us, but if, if you're squeamish, definitely not for you. If, if you're looking for a deep, deep story with great acting and deep characters, this is not the film for you. This is just a film. You get on a roller coaster, you scream, and you laugh with your friends, and then you get off of it, and you're cool. Another one was a guy, Aaron Burns. Um, I'm not going to get into much with him, but... I'll just say he's the heavy set character in the film, and I thought, uh, you know, he did a pretty good job. Uh, the Alejandro character, played by Ariel Levy, um, I might as well say it. It's kind of a spoiler, not really, but he's a he's a dickhead, and you're gonna hate him. 
Um, and and he's supposed to be every almost every horror film you have to have that jerk. They showed some of a guy's penis. I didn't want to see that. Overall, I think it was it was really well done. The cast was was good. Um, there was a little, like I said, some some cheesy writing and some you know, especially in the beginning, you're kind of like, okay, this doesn't make sense. And then, you know, even throughout the film, there were a couple of little plot holes here and there. It wasn't, you know, it's not perfect uh, to say it's it's not perfect at all. Let's just, let me just leave it there. But uh, you know, there are some. There's one part that kind of didn't make sense uh, where. Um, a character seems like they could have escaped the situation and just kind of stayed there asking for help. It was kind of a strange thing, especially considering the scenes right prior to that one. So I thought that was a little weird. But as far as the special effects are concerned, most of them seem practical. But there were a couple of uh, visual effects that you can tell that they kind of threw in. Uh, there's a scene with some ants and there's uh, some blood splattering that kind of uh, looked a little CG-ish to me. But uh, overall, it, it looked pretty real, pretty convincing, and, and, and it was well done. So one thing I want to talk about is a little bit of the controversy that's kind of surrounding the film. Uh, aside from the violence, it's actually the violence depicted against activism now. Uh, recently, I saw this uh, little promo video with Eli Roth, and he's actually talking about uh, how, you know, their activism is cool in the world or whatever, but sometimes, I guess, the people are annoying, and it's great fun uh, to see these type of people being tortured and killed or whatever. He, it's basically what he said, and uh, even I had a little bit of reservations going into it, thinking, you know, what's the point of doing this? Uh, it's... It's really not that big of a deal. It, it really isn't. Uh, actually, the type of people that he's talking about, uh, not so much all of the people who you see are the victims in this film, but uh, one person in particular, you could clearly understand why uh, anyone would you know, despise somebody like that. So I, I kind of get where he was going with it, but I know some people... I'm like, oh, what? He doesn't like activism, you know, activists, and he's killing them off and torturing them. It, it's not quite like that. So if you're turned off before you've seen the film uh, by that type of controversy, that's not something that I think really, uh, really matters. Uh, but uh, it's, it's worth mentioning because I know that there has been some uh, criticism specifically geared towards that. So hopefully if you're doing your research and you're watching my video and you're kind of on the fence whether you should see this film or not and maybe you're on the fence because of the violence, maybe you're on the fence because you just want to watch something incredible, this isn't that kind of film. This isn't the kind of film where you should be expecting uh, spectacular acting, spectacular anything uh, other than violence. and. I know for some people, that's just a problem. So like I said, the critics are going to slam this. In fact, critics are already slamming this film. If you don't have a strong stomach and if you have a low tolerance for uh, these type of films, just don't watch it. It's that simple. But for those of you who are into this film, uh, this type of film, this genre, the cannibal genre, which doesn't really exist, but there are a couple of films that kind of exists in this realm that are much different than any other films, uh, definitely this is something you should check out. But again, I must warn you, it's not for everyone. So, overall, The Green Inferno, I'm going to give it a 7.8 out of 10. Uh, some of the pros of the film is, of course, the shocking violence. Uh, it had pretty good special effects. Uh, the cannibals were also not actors, which made it really authentic when you watched it um, and uh, surprisingly it had some humorous scenes that uh, I was not expecting. I also liked the lead actress. Uh, she she was really good. Uh, some of the cons was um, the acting and the writing was sort of a mixed bag. 
Um, some of the CG work, uh, especially when it came to like the blood, was a little kind of weak. There were some plot holes. Uh, the shocking violence could also be considered uh, a negative. And then the ending uh, wasn't totally satisfying for me. Uh, so those are the pros and cons. But if, if you like uh, horror films and if you like this particular brand of horror films, definitely check out The Green Inferno. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share, comment, and of course, subscribe. Mastermind out. The following show starts in five minutes. Five minutes. The following show starts in four minutes. Four minutes. The following show starts in three minutes. Minutes. The following show starts in two minutes. Come here. Come here. Come here. Thank <laughs> you.